Welcome to another week, another show of Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. Here we are again, right here, Carver Hawkeye Arena, the Big Ten Conference Room. Lisa Bluter joining us for this show, and after Lisa, we're going to have uh, Jan Jensen and Jenny Fitzgerald joining us to close out the show. So, Lisa, as always, thanks for joining us. Yeah, great seeing you. My pleasure. Lisa, I was just telling you off the air as we record this on Wednesday afternoon, December 20th, a year ago today, mm -hmm. you and I and Caitlin Clark and Monica Sinano and my production partner Michael Merrick and Bailey Turner, your SID, we were all in this room a year ago recording. Yeah. So my easy, basic first question to you today is, hmm, what's happened in your life the last year? What's changed? What's different? <laughs> yeah, things have changed quite <laughs> a, bit a bit since just that discussed. time. Uh, yeah, we've won a Big Ten <laughs> tournament championship. Uh, obviously making it to the championship game and uh, you know being a historic event for our program that we've never made it there yeah. before and you know certainly we would have enjoyed winning who wouldn't um you know i feel like our team did a great job representing this university in our great state and uh just really proud of of our the way they conducted themselves and handled themselves in that situation but yeah, since we've been home, it's been a little bit of a whirlwind. Um, and uh, obviously, Caitlin was named Player of the Year nationally uh, and uh, just was recently named Co-Sportswoman of the Year. Okay. Uh, that's all sports, all women across the country. That's amazing accomplishment. So a lot has changed, including sellouts and that sort of thing. Caitlin just seems to be wired differently than any other player I've ever seen or been around for a number of years. Your thoughts? Yeah, I do think she's wired differently. I mean, she's such a competitor. She loves the game. She's really good at it, and she knows she's really good at it. <laughs> just and in. she loves yeah. to, you know, I mean, show off her, her, her skill. And, uh, you know, the event at the crossover was really special. Um, I had an inward goal of I wanted, I was hoping that 50,000 people would show up. And, you know, our administration came to us and they go, are you going to be disappointed if only 20 show up? And I said, no, I'm not going to be disappointed. <laughs> but I really believe in the Hawkeye fans. And they came through. 56,000 people came out for that game. Most spectacular photographs, um, just you know, little girls screaming, adults crying. I thought it was such an empowering event for women as we broke the attendance record for women's basketball. Um, but I just really feel like it was a, a great event to celebrate where her sport has come. Yeah. And uh, and then of course you know, um, you know that Caitlin going back to Des Moines uh, last week and playing in Wells Fargo. You know she performed pretty well there she she was <laughs> yeah. one and three yep. going into that and we she and her college career she's one and oh so had a great great night and uh, again that was almost felt like a NCAA tournament type of atmosphere yeah, right. it was very electric um, we were playing in a different arena um, you know a semi-pro arena and it just it felt electric and I'm really glad that some of the people that don't get to see us playing Carver mm -hmm. now because of being sold out got to see us play there. Well, you're way too humble to say it, so I'm going to say it for you. I'm not going to gloss over all your accomplishments. We did that last year, and we, I, Michael and I were joking we could almost do a whole show on your accomplishments. But from everything we mentioned last year, and again, you are Iowa's all-time winner, lead over a C. Vivian Stringer a person you were very close to, as you mentioned, too. Uh, coming up as a coach, you were able to reach out to her and, and uh, became very friendly over the years, even coaching against her when she left here to go to Rutgers. Yeah. But you also, since we've last talked, got 500 career wins here at Iowa as the head coach. That happened out in Florida. 11-1 and one this year right now, again, as you go into tomorrow night's game against Loyola Chicago. 11-1, and 1-0 one, one oh in the Big Ten. But My congratulations. Team. I know milestones are great. You've had the Coach of the Year honors, and every time you win, it seems like you're passing another milestone. But I didn't want that one to get past us, so congrats on the 500. Well, I appreciate it. But Jan Jensen and Jenny Fitzgerald have been here for every one of those 500. <laughs> that's right. And they're going to be here later you in the bet. program. You bet. That's why they're here. That's right. But, uh, yeah, that's very special to share that journey with, you know, my best friends and, and people that I admire and I trust. And uh, so it was, it was uh, you know, just I was able to have the opportunity to recognize them before one of our games, which they so richly deserve. Yeah, that's fantastic. And as we're here in the Big Ten Conference Room, you and I talked about, you signed your contract here. Yeah. This all, we're going full circle as yeah. you roll back with your eyes. You know, 24 years here now at Iowa after being at Drake and St. Ambrose and being a player at Northern Iowa. So you've got Iowa through and through. And you talked about that where some other universities outside the state of Iowa looked at you back in the day mm -hmm. and you thought, oh, heck, I'm... I'm an Iowa gal, but what I find interesting about that, and you and Jan and Jenny and I will talk about this, 
where women's basketball has gone from this day, because I remember you telling me too last year, yeah, Dave, I, hel- I should have held out for 500 more, or you held out for 500 more, or whatever it was, $500. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And now you see where salaries and women's basketball on the national landscape, not just against men's basketball, but in the national sporting landscape. I cannot wait to talk to Jan and Jenny and you, the three of you, to get your take on this with Caitlin's award yesterday with the Sporting News. I, I just find it fascinating to see, if you could tell me in your words before we bring Jan and Jenny in here, what, where the game is today and how just that has to tickle you pink. Oh, it does, because I was of the generation that got to see it when nobody cared about it. Uh, you know, I was of the generation when I played, you know, there was a couple hundred people in the stands and it was back page paragraph mm-hmm. box score. Um, you know, I have one videotape of my one of my games in college. <laughs> and so, you know, things have changed a lot and, and I'm just so thankful. But, you know, the athletes are better. The coaching is better. Um, the promotion of our sport yeah. is better. And since we've gotten TV now, you know, the Big Ten Network and, and now, you know, ESPN, Fox, and, and you know, it, having TV exposure helps show everybody what our game has become. Yeah. And when they see it, they're like, oh my, I haven't watched women's basketball in a long time, but it's really good. And it is really good yeah. right now. It's played at a very, very high rate. The women are unbelievable athletes and shooters and intelligent basketball players. And so I just think that people didn't know about it. Yeah. And now we've been exposed to it and uh, we're not going backwards. <laughs> and honestly, I think our team last year just gave people an opportunity to think about something other than what was going around the country. And yes. we needed something happy something positive to to cheer for and I think our team became that team absolutely and you and I talked about that last year as did uh, Monica and I and Caitlin and I and and what you folks bring to the community Uh, and again not saying no one else does that but it is neat to see and the other thing I find fascinating when you mention it about Caitlin it's overlooked she's an incredible passer and I don't care what Sport, what uh, men's or women's basketball I'll put her against anybody from 30 35 feet out oh, yeah. it's a normal shot for her yeah. it's not like coming from her knees oh, no. it's a normal shot and you were talking about the three-point line earlier I was gonna joke and say are they gonna start making a four-point line oh. for her because now let's be honest as a coach and I've asked you this before I have to ask again just to relive last year have you ever come down Has Jan or Jenny and I'll ask them separately Ever come down with Caitlin? And it was one dribble inside the half court, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, let's be honest. That wasn't logo. That was dang near a half court three. She took one dribble on Saturday, was there, took it and shot it. I got to believe all three of you collectively and individually said, no, no, no. Okay, good shot, good shot. <laughs> True, have you ever done that with Caitlin? Oh, I've done that many times with Caitlin. <laughs> but at this point, I know it's coming. And so now I just, you know, I just smile and shake my head. What because can you do? I cannot do anything else. But <laughs> she is like a special player that... You know, and you can just see her joy after yeah. she makes that. And she's slapping, you know, high fives to everybody in the front, in the front row. row. That was great. Um, you know, they and, and how much fun did they have? You yeah. know, they enjoyed it, too. Well, look so. how you and I are laughing right now just yeah. talking about it. Yeah. As a coach, yeah. you got to be loving it. So, well, Lisa, let's do this. Thank you. Yeah. Great insights, as always, My for this pleasure. first segment. And let's yep. uh, close out the show, the All next right. two segments, with uh, the three amigos. All right. Or the three Stooges, three, whatever one you want, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. You said it, I didn't. But, yeah, looking forward to letting those two uh, either indict themselves or clear their record with you. But, yeah, Very looking good. forward to catching up with head Iowa women's basketball coach Lisa Bluter, and we'll have uh, Jan Jensen, her associate head coach, and Jenny Fitzgerald, her assistant, 30-plus years. Well, how many years yeah. exactly? Uh, I got to do the math again. I think it's about uh, 32. 32 years, the three amigos. Wow. Or whatever you want to call yourself. (laughs) So for Lisa Bluter, I'm Dave O'Hara on Hawkeye. We'll be back with more in just a few moments. To have a strong finish, you need an excellent start. It's true on the track and also in the field. That's why Mershman Seeds works tirelessly to deliver cutting edge technology year after year. Introducing Starting Line, Mershman Seed's latest advancement in seed treatment. Now providing added protection from white mold and sudden death syndrome all season. Ask for Starting Line Seed Treatment from Mershman Seeds, your friend in the field. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara, Lisa Bluter, Jan Jensen, the post whisperer, and Jenny Fitzgerald, and I'm going to tell a little factoid that we talked about off the camera because Jenny's too humble to say it. Not only was she Miss Basketball in the state of Iowa from North Scott High School, she was also Miss Volleyball and Miss Softball. So kudos to you, rock star down there on the end. And That's with a apologies. Long time ago. Ah, and I know you said oh, there weren't that many schools, and I don't care if there are 110 <laughs> or 1,000. Great job. But Jan, I'm going to start with you and then go to Jenny since Lisa and I did the whole first segment talking. and. 
you know, head women's basketball coach, associate uh, women's basketball coach, and assistant coach. So Jan Jensen, Lisa Bluter walks into Drake, your senior year, Jenny had just left, had finished her playing career, a very successful playing Sounds career. Sounds like a right? joke. Lisa Bluter <laughs> walks in, and I'm a priest, and what's going to happen? <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll finish that off the air. We can't go on the, uh, on the air with that, Jan. I, see, this is why, I'm, I, folks, we even talked about this. This is why I'm sitting down here. Lisa's going to rain those two and the three of me. Sorry. No, <laughs> don't you dare apologize for me. I love it. That's awesome. But thinking like I'm thinking, and that's okay. not always good. But let's talk about that. Lisa Bluter walks into, before it was the NAP Center, what were your thoughts? What was your experience? Instead of hearing Lisa's version, what's your version? Well, you know, being a senior, so my fellow seniors, we were just kind of like, oh man, we got to start over our <laughs> senior year. Who's this? It's like, what? What's this going to be like? And you're all concerned. Um, but when we met her, you know, she was fun. She was young. She had a really good energy to her. So we were excited. But the the story I really like to share is. Um, there's two. So when we were playing one time practicing, um, she was kind of intense and she didn't really enjoy how we'd started practice. And we were doing, she had these stations. Wow, you said that incredibly diplomatically, yes. by the way. <laughs> Kudos to you. And we were dying, honestly, and she was not happy and she sent us all down back in the locker room and said to start over. Wow. And we had to start over with like we were exhausted but she got our attention like it wasn't this was not fun and games mm -hmm. we were intense and i remember that was a breakthrough moment because we're like oh geez you know she really expects us to be better we can be better and she's not going to expect anything less mm -hmm. and then the one thing we went to hawaii during our senior year we played in a big time tournament and we were playing the fourth ranked team and we were getting we got beat pretty badly well, in our past coaching, if you didn't perform really well, where the, regardless of where you were at, it was you know pretty much video, mm -hmm. you know, watching and just a lot of intensity and not a lot of sightseeing. So we got hammered. Lisa comes in the locker room and we're all thinking like we're never going to see Hawaii. This is going to be awful. Lisa comes in and she's like, "You didn't block out. We did not handle the press. I do not like our intensity." Da 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 da. And then she said. Okay, you got 15 minutes to shower. We're gonna eat a hard rock. We're gonna go to the beach. We're gonna watch film tonight. You got it. And she leaves, and we're like, oh my gosh, we love her. You know, <laughs> oh my gosh. And that's when I wish Jenny, who's a year older, mm -hmm. we she could have experienced that because those moments, um, even for me in my coaching career, it really helped shape. You can work hard, and you can also still enjoy, right. regardless of winning, of winning or losing. And I think that's, you know, Lisa, Jenny, and I being together all these years, um, we've always held true to that. Mm -hmm. Especially if one of us wants to remain intense, someone else will be like, remember, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, a, it's a game. We can do this. If we relax a little bit today, they're going to perform better tomorrow. And I think that's what we've all held each other accountable. But Lisa really... That's how she started coaching. Now, so, Jenny, now it's you. Uh, <laughs> you meet Lisa Blue. What was your meeting with Lisa when you weren't playing there at Drake then and uh, you were gone or, you know, you weren't playing anymore? What was your first uh, experience meeting Lisa or where, when, how? Well, I actually went on to uh, grad school at Southern Illinois. I was a grad assistant there, and so we were still playing mm -hmm. Drake. Mm -hmm. um, and so... It was a gateway conference back then, it right? Was. I think, yeah. yeah, it sure was. And um, so that was our first experience. You know, we thought that Drake would be down a little bit and, you know, weren't to be as tough as, you know, you thought they would be. Mm -hmm. and when we went to Drake and played, they pretty much kicked us the first, and we were pretty good at Southern at the time, yeah, yeah. and kicked us in that first half. And I mean, our head coach there, Coach Scott, was pretty livid and livid, <laughs> a little livid at me that I didn't <laughs> maybe explain things better to her <laughs> about Drake. But anyway. It was your Scott, yeah, what happened? Yeah, right. yeah. But um, I think it was that first instance was seeing how quickly Lisa turned it around and how much fun the team was happy and having. And I was very happy for them to have that they had that experience. Um, Jan, specifically Jan senior year yeah. and the other gals that I had played with as well. So then that experience then, you stayed and got your master's at Southern mm -hmm. and then, um, then how did you uh, happen upon Lisa and then uh, consequently then later on with, uh, with Jan? Yeah, well she had positions open at the same time and so when Jan was finished playing grad school, I had just, or playing overseas, mm -hmm. I had just finished grad school, then we both started working that following, about August started, mm -hmm. well you started yeah. a little bit, I think. A little bit earlier. Before, yeah. And Lisa had known me a little bit better because we played together, right? right? Yeah. So then yeah. I came back in, I was going to be a GA and I got, then got to be a, a 
full-time assistant, but we had that relationship. And then Jenny was done. So then it just kind of worked out how we just started together and Yep. We're like bad pennies. Lisa can't, can't get rid of us. <laughs> no, nope. she can't. Nope. We nope. keep showing up in that purse. She keeps having success. And <laughs> they keep fight us. <laughs> well, we both disagree with that. Lisa and I both. Yeah. We, we, we know better. But yeah, Jenny, you, you had had the experience of playing with Jan too at Drake. So you two had that familiarity. So that really is a nice melding uh, story. And of course, I knew it, but I wanted to hear your retelling. So now, Lisa Bluter, your chance to either get even or set the record straight or whatever that is. What do you remember in your first uh, appearances or first uh, remembrances of meeting Jan and Jenny? Well, Jan was a decorated high school athlete and I was the coach at St. Ambrose when she was a senior in high school. And, you know, my athletic director, Jim Fox at the time was saying, aren't you gonna try to recruit her? And I'm like, well, everybody in the country was recruiting her. She's yeah. not gonna come to an NAI school in Davenport, Iowa. So I had known of, of Jan and followed her. And so I just thought it was really, I was really fortunate that I would be able to go in and coach somebody of that yeah. caliber at my first division one job. And I knew about Jenny Fitzgerald because she was from the Quad City area. Yep. In fact, her dad would come to my games <laughs> at St. Ambrose and we would talk. And, and so I always knew Jenny just because she was such a spectacular athlete yeah. in our area. Again, I had no chance of recruiting her at St. Ambrose, but um, you know, when she had the chance to come back, uh, she was an unbelievable point guard at Drake, and so when I had the opportunity to bring both of these, both of these uh, unbelievable coaches back, I was so thankful. Ladies, I can't thank you enough. I know you've had a busy day with, you know, you've got finals and you've had class, you know, trying to get the, the ladies through all that, but you had practice. They got their Christmas party tonight. That's right. Uh, yeah. So being here at Carver Hawkeye is great. And I want to thank all three of you. We've got another segment left, but thank you all so much for taking time oh, to do this. Oh, it's our pleasure. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Talking to some of the great Iowa Hawkeye basketball. Here's the head coach, the associate head coach, and the assistant coach. You got Lisa Bluter, you got Jan Jensen, and Jenny Fitzgerald. I'm Dave O'Hara with Hawkeye. We'll be back with more to close out the show in just a few moments. Who do you trust to produce the best deal? A seat company that's chasing technology or a seat company that's writing a book on it? Mersman Seeds is a leader in technology. We're independent and family owned. Our sister company, MS Technologies, provides access to world-class traits and genetics. And our starting line seed treatment is second to none. Who can you trust with your yields? Mersman Seeds, your friend in the field. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara, Lisa Bluter, Jan Jensen, Jenny Fitzgerald. You got your head coach, Iowa women's basketball, associate head coach, and assistant coach. Ladies, it has been a blast. I can't thank you enough for your time. So let's close out with a real uh, whiz banger here, the last one. <laughs> so let's start with Lisa. I'm going to have you talk about your mindset. You and I talked a little bit in the first segment about where basketball is today. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about where it's going. You said it's not going anywhere, but you referenced it earlier in the first segment, and I want to come back to it. I said I would. Yesterday's announcement, again, as we record this on Wednesday, December 20th, I find it fascinating that with Caitlin getting the National Athlete or Co-Athlete of the Year with Angel Reese, and as, as infamous or famous as she is and all that went on in the championship game last year, and Iowa fans have been out of shape, as homers <laughs> should be. You should be pulling for your gal. But what it brings to the national forefront, that championship game last year, you, uh, your team setting attendance records wherever they go, on the road, at home, national championship game, 55,646, or I like your math better, 56,000 <laughs> at the crossover at Kinnick. That's where I see this heading with and or without Caitlin Clark, you know, if she goes to the WNBA, the NBA. So as we talk about the future, I have to ask, I'm going to ask all three of you so you both have time to think about your answer. And, and Lisa, you've been very forthright in your answer to this. Are you going to talk, when you talk to Caitlin, obviously you're going to be pro-Iowa, uh, but what's best for her or when that decision comes at the end of this year, whether she's going to go to the WNBA or she has the option to come back for another year, what is your conversation like with her? Well, I mean, why would I not want her to stay? I Obviously. mean, that's silly, you know? So of course I want her to stay, but I also have to, you know, back her in whatever she chooses to do and whatever she wants to do. But I certainly want to point out some of the good things uh, that staying at Iowa can give her, um, including the opportunity to completely rewrite the NCAA yeah. record books 
And, and well, it would be just be an autobiography of Caitlin Clark, <laughs> yeah, right? It, I mean, it, it really could be. And it's not like she's giving up on the dream right. of the WNBA. She's just delaying it a year. So it's not like you're really choosing between the WNBA and Iowa. It's just choosing about one year. Where do you want to spend this one year if you have either choice? And before uh, uh, Jan and Jenny jump in with their answers, I find it fascinating how NIL has changed this completely because now she's, it's not costing her any money, if anything. Right. I mean, we all know the national ad campaign she has and she sat here last year and told me Dave when I came here as a freshman I played in front of cutouts yeah I had no idea there was right. going to be NIL right. I had no idea you know she's a very good student as we as all right. your players are you've right. you've uh, mentioned that multiple times so she's got a great future no matter what she decides so I, I hear you obviously you want her to come back but I'm, I, I thank you for taking us inside that conversation so I'm going to skip Jan and go to you, Jenny, since you handle the guards, so to speak. And I know Caitlin's not a guard per se, so you get extra time to think about it, Jan. But uh, Jenny, what are, what are your thoughts uh, when you have that conversation with Caitlin? You know, I'll be honest, I um, haven't had the conversation with her. You know, I know Coach Bluter has, and her family has, and she has friends and people kind of in her camp. So I try to shy away from it. I think a lot everyone asks her that That's question. That's fair, yeah. And so we just talk more about life things or basketball and fun things and instead of because she's having those conversations with others, and I just don't want to put more pressure on her. So I personally haven't. I would. My answer would be very similar to Lisa's. You know, we would support her in her decision. You know, you'd hope that she would say sure. that. Though. Well, that's. I was. I wasn't going to let you <laughs> off the hook. I was going to say when or if. Let's hypothetically say she asked you. So thank you for your candor on that. So. Jen, you had a chance to think, and I know, as, as the ladies have told me, you're a person of few words. Lay it on us. <laughs> what, what would you say, or what have you said, what will you say? What, lay it out for us, please. Well, I think we don't, I mean, you can't have everybody having those conversations, right? right? I think we, she knows you don't really have to tell her. You know, we're a family, so we, she knows we want her to stay, but we want the best for her. Uh, my thing is, is it's understandable why everybody wants to know they all have an opinion well this this is going to follow her that money's going to follow her. Da, 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 da. well what's it going to be like when she stays or goes it's like enjoy the moment then we have her right now we yeah. have this particular team well right now mm -hmm. and so we're all of everybody not us everybody so wants to know and it's just whether it's this year that she says goodbye to college or the year after we've been so fortunate that this is part of the era yeah. and we've been in this beginning of the nil and the craziness of collectives and all that stuff but we've had arguably potentially one of the most greatest ever marketable yeah. ever and we've gotten to learn and grow and be part of that so um, i'm not really worried about what's going to happen when she leaves because megan left yeah you know michael jordan left um, if you follow the women's game, Diana Taurasi left. She was a great player for Connecticut. So I just think it helps me stay in the moment and enjoy the logo shot she hit today. Yeah. It enjoyed, you know. <laughs> and, you know, when you have to breathe, when she, you know, does, you know, maybe six logos in a row. Yeah. You know, whatever. It's what a 21-year-old kid the does. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's my thing is trying to do that and trying to get everybody else to enjoy the year too because there's a – a lot of excitement left to come. Well, you've really hit upon, all three of you have really hit upon it. You're, this isn't a, an era player or once in a generation. This is a once in a lifetime talent. Yeah. And as we talk today, she's number nine on the scoring list, but by the end of this calendar year, yeah. she could be top five. Right. You know, and Kelsey Plum now is not that far away at number right. one. And you mentioned some great players, all three of you have, right. throughout college basketball. But that's the thing that excites me as an Iowa fan and should excite all the viewers. Yes, if Caitlin does leave this year or the next year, whenever it happens, it's inevitable. She's right, going to be right. done playing yeah. here. Right. You've got a great well of talent coming in, and it was well documented on social media with Callie Levine, and, mm -hmm. and you went over to Wisconsin to recruit, and, mm -hmm. and Callie and her mom were there watching two players when you went and played in Madison. That's the thing I think that's encouraging is where it's leaving the game in a far better place than where we're mm -hmm. headed next. So well stated by all three of you. Let's enjoy it while yeah. we have it, and it is yeah. what it is. So, okay, now the competitive side has got to come out of the three of you, and I did this with the Sanfords uh, in their show the last couple of weeks. Uh -oh. Definitely me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't you know. and wait, Price, wait, wait, you and Price Sanford would get along very, very well. I love the assuredness. Uh, okay, so we're going to start with Lisa first, and just go down the line since I kind of jumbled the order of questions here. We'll come back to you, Coach. If you're playing days, would you play? Who would be an easier or more desirable, whatever phrase? And just see, uh, Jen is already wincing. Who would you choose as your head coach? Who would you like to play for, Jenny or Jan? 
And don't say both yes. or co-head coaches. <laughs> I'm one. I'm five steps I'm ahead. I'm picking Jenny. Yeah. Why? Woo! Why? Why? <laughs> well, because Jenny does the majority of our scouting for us, um, and she's person. You know, they both sit by me on the bench. But Jenny is really, um, and, and not that Jan's not, but Jenny really watches the most basketball of anybody on our staff. All right, Absolutely. victory! I love the uh, the cheer. <laughs> We're gonna go right down the line. You, you gotta know. give her a few. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, who do you want? Who do you want to play to take the I shot? I love it. Me. I love it. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> Here's the competitive go side. Ahead. I love. <laughs> Here's the competitive strategies. Forget that. We're talking about playing. <laughs> Here's the competitive side I love. So thank you both, all three of you, so much. Lisa first, and then the the three of us, uh, the three ladies joining me. What a team. What a future. We're all very happy with where we're going. Do we have an end point in mind, uh, the three of us, or are you just going to go as long as you can? As long as we're having fun. As long as they'll keep us busy. Yeah. As long as they'll keep us. <laughs> hey, we just keep showing up to work right. and they keep letting us yeah. in. Give change the locks and the passcodes. We're all good. I expected nothing else from you three. Thank you so much. So for the aforementioned uh, ladies, I'm Dave O'Hara with Hawkeye. Thanks again to my production partner, Michael Merrick, and to Bailey Turner, the SID here for Iowa Women's Basketball. That's all from us. Thanks to all of you. And as always, thanks for staying tuned at the end of the program for these rolling credits to give our advertisers and sponsors the attention and credit they so richly deserve. And as always, to our aforementioned guests and to you, the viewers. That's all from us at Hawkeye. Thanks to all of you.